How's it going everyone? And in this video, we're going to be walking through how to set up the AWS CLI locally on your computer. And then we're also going to be using it to walk through an example of launching an EC2 instance on the free tier. So we'll get started. And so I'm going to provide links to all these things in the description, but basically it's pretty straightforward to actually install the AWS CLI. So you're just going to choose the operating system you've got from this page that AWS has in their docs. And because I'm using Windows, I'm going to download the MSI for Windows going to click on this guy right here. Okay. And so now we're just going to click next and accept the terms of the license. And we're just going to keep all these things as defaults. Click install. It's going to prompt me if I want to actually do this. I'm going to say yes. All right. And so that is it. So we've now installed the AWS command line. So I'm going to click finish and I'm going to open up a PowerShell uh, window right here. I'm just going to zoom in and you can confirm that this thing is successfully installed by running the command AWS dash dash version. And we should see it come back to us. So it tells us which version we're running, um, which is great. So that means we've successfully installed it. So uh, the next step here is we're actually going to be uh, making sure that our AWS command line uh, has been set up with the appropriate credentials to do stuff on our behalf, because right now it has no credentials at all. So we can't do anything with it. So um, what we're going to do for that is we're going to go to our AWS management console and just make note of which region you're in right now. So I am in US East one and um, I'm just going to remember that for later. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the IAM dashboard. Um, you can also type in IAM up here to get there. Uh, and basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a user. And this is where we're going to click on add users. And uh, I'm going to give this thing a username. So I'm going to call this thing EC2 full access. And um, in terms of the credential types, we're going to want to choose access key programmatic access because we want to make this something that we can use through our command line interface that we just installed for AWS. So next I'm going to click on permissions and I'm going to attach existing policies. So AWS has already created some policies for us that we can just attach to this thing. And when you're doing this stuff, you want to follow the principle of least privilege. So only give this thing access to what it needs. So if you give it admin access, you're giving it access to everything. We don't want to do that. We want to be a little bit more conservative here. And we're, in our case, we're just going to do EC2 full access. And you can look into this thing and uh, see what it, can, what it has the ability to do. So basically, it's going to be able to have even more access than we necessarily want. Um, but we can scope this down in the future, but just for getting started with this and walking through this example, we're going to stick with Amazon EC2 full access policy. We're going to add some tags. Um, not going to really add any tags here though. So we're just going to review this and we're going to then click on create user. And so we're going to give this thing a second. So now what we have is a access key ID. So we're going to copy this and I'm going to, uh, save this into a notepad. And we also have a secret access key and I'm going to delete this as soon as we're done with the video. So uh, people can't make resources on my behalf. Um, and so this is the secret. And so we're just going to remember that. And then also good practice, just remember uh, the specific um, region that you're currently in. And in our case, it's us East one. So region us East one. Okay. So with all that information, we are now going to go back to our command line and we know that we've got AWS uh, installed correctly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to type in the command AWS configure. And you can see it's remembering past credentials that I've had. And I actually want to put in new credentials. So if you've never done this before, this will actually be blank and there won't be anything in here. Um, so basically what I want to do is I'm going to be changing this. I'm going to paste in this new access key ID. And it's also remembering the old secret access key. Um, so I'm going to be replacing that as well. So I'm going to paste in this guy and then default region name. I've typed in us East one in the past. Uh, if you haven't typed in anything, uh, previously, it'll be blank. So you can put in what you want here. Very important to specify a default region name, because if you are using the EC2 launch, uh, parameters, basically it will need to know an AMI ID and AMI IDs are specific to regions. So that's the reason why I recommend putting one in. Um, in our case, I'm not going to bother entering anything. Um, and then our default output format, I'm just going to also leave that as blank. Um, and so that is all we need to do. You can double check that your new credentials have been saved into this AWS's profile that it's going to use to talk to the management console on your behalf by doing the following. So I'm going to just go back to AWS configure again, 
and we can now see that it is recognizing that we've got this new set of credentials in here. Again, this is just for updating it, but if you're creating this from scratch, uh, a nice way to double check that everything is where you expect it to be. All right, so now that that's done, um, we're gonna go to the documentation for uh, actually creating an instance. And so Amazon's got some pretty good docs, I'll also provide a link to in the description. Um, but in our case, basically what we're doing is we're going to be calling AWS EC2 run instances, and we're just gonna copy this command right here. And I'm going to make a notepad right here. Uh, and we're gonna walk through this stuff and how to get it. So um, what we have is the following. So let me just close this out. So basically um, the first thing that uh, we're doing is we're calling AWS EC2 run instances, and we're passing in this property image ID. And you can see that they've put in this garbage or you know placeholder value right now, AMI XXX. So basically what you need to do is you need to find out what is the specific AMI ID for the EC2 instance that you wanna put into your AWS account. So um, in my case, we're gonna to go to the EC2 dashboard and we're going to scroll down on the left pane right here to AMI catalog. And this is basically the operating system that will be running on that piece of hardware that you're renting from them. So uh, in our case, you can check this little box and we see free tier only. And I want to go with the AL2, the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Um, so I'm going to copy this and make note how they have different AMI IDs for the given architecture that we're gonna go with. The T2 instance that we're gonna be spinning up is gonna be the x86 architecture CPU. Um, but if you were doing one with ARM, uh, you would make sure to change the operating system, basically the AMI ID uh, appropriately. So in my case, I'm just going to paste this guy in just like that. And then um, we're only gonna wanna have one of these things spin up in our case. Uh, we're gonna go with the T2 microtype because that's the free tier. And then also it's asking for a key pair name. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna again scroll down here and there should be a part on this page where we can set up key pairs under network and security. And I've already got a key pair called my key pair, but we'll create a new one just for the sake of uh, walking through a full demo. So my key pair one, and I'm gonna keep this as RSA and we're gonna do a PEM file and we're just gonna click on create key pair. And so now what we've done is we've downloaded a key pair to our local computer called my key pair one dot PEM. So I'm going to update the name of the key pair that's going to be associated with the EC2 instance that we're spinning up appropriately. And then uh, next up, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be having a security group that is gonna be associated with this specific EC2 instance. Um, so again, I'm going to need to go to security groups. And in my case, uh, I'll create a new security group just so we can walk through uh, a test. So test SG and uh, you know we'll just say this is for testing and we're gonna add some inbound rules. So if you are going to be SSHing to this EC2 instance, you will need to open up uh, SSH, that's port 22 with the TCP protocol, and um, we're going to need to allow it to basically come from anywhere. So uh, on this guy right here, uh, for inbound, we're going to allow that CIDR block, which is basically any IPv4 address, and um, just to be super safe, you can also open it up to any IPv6 address like that. Um, and so we're just going to leave it as that. So pretty simple uh, security group. And now that we've done that, um, basically what's just happened is we've spun up a security group called test SG. This security group has a security group ID. We're gonna copy this guy, so this string of characters right here. And this is what we want to supply into our uh, parameter or argument to the EC2 uh, CLI through AWS like that. And then finally, we are getting asked to provide a subnet ID. And in our case, um, we're not gonna go with this placeholder value. We're going to replace that with a actual real value. So in our case, um, make note that we are still in this region, US East one, which is very important because this will dictate the uh, our, our subnet. So basically we're gonna go into the VPC dashboard and from here, we can see that there are uh, six subnets. And so we're basically gonna pick you know, one of these subnets to go with, I'll go with this guy. I'm gonna copy this subnet ID and just paste that right into there like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy all of this stuff that we've now entered in for the image ID, which is really just that Omni ID, the instance type, the key name, which is that uh, PEM file name that we've just downloaded to our local machine the security group IDs and then also that subnet ID. So all this stuff is now 
what we want. And so we're just going to copy this and we're going to open up uh, the shell again. And we're just gonna paste in this command. We're gonna hit enter and we're gonna let this thing run. And you can see that right now we got a good response. So it's basically telling us this new instance ID that's getting spun up right now, which is pretty cool. So we're going to copy this guy and we're gonna confirm that it is actually working. So this is the instance ID that we just provisioned. And while this thing is uh, spinning up, I'm gonna go back into here. And we're gonna go back to our EC2 dashboard. And we should see an instance uh, that is getting ready to spin up if it's not already spun up. And that is pretty cool. So that instance ID ending in one uh, FA is right here. And so we basically created all of this entirely through the AWS CLI once we knew the appropriate uh, arguments to pass into it, like the subnet ID. Um, so basically that's pretty cool. Uh, so we just did this all using the AWS CLI with the appropriate permissions. If you didn't have correct permissions, this step would not work. You would get some kind of error message. You'd have to double check the IAM user that you configured for that role to make sure it actually has the access to do this. Um, but that is it. So basically we can see this stuff getting reflected in the AWS Management Console UI. And if we wanted to actually terminate something, um, we can do that as well. So there's on this page right here, examples on terminating this stuff. So we just look up terminate. And so in our case, uh, we're going to copy this command and we have that instance ID now. So I'm not even gonna have to interact with the AWS uh, UI anymore. We can just go in here, we can type in it was terminate instances, instance IDs, and then we're just going to paste in this specific instance ID that we have right there. Copy this command, go back into our PowerShell. Uh, I'm going to type in clear, sorry, you can't see that. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to paste in this command to actually terminate this instance programmatically. And hit enter and it is now telling us that it's shutting it down. So we'll just go back to instance details right here and confirm that that is actually happening, which it is. So no touching of the uh, AWS UI. It's all being done programmatically through the CLI, which is pretty cool. And so it helps us interact with stuff a lot more programmatically. So uh, that is gonna wrap things up for this video. And um, we're just as a, a best practice, we are term terminating the instance we just created. If you accidentally do this thing on, um, after you've exceeded the free tier limits, you'll start getting billed for it. So I do recommend cleaning this up once you guys finish. Um, but that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you guys next time.